Hey guys, what's up? So today we will be discussing a topic that has been in our minds ever since the first MonsterVerse movie came out in 2014. And that is why is Godzilla on our side and helping us against other titans instead of just destroying everything else like the earlier Showa versions. In 2014, he battled and killed the two Mutos and in 2019 he battled and later vaporized his greatest rival which is King Ghidorah. It could be that unlike other Japanese movies where Godzilla is portrayed as an evil incarnation of the nuclear bombings and a monster that destroys everything in his path or unlike the versions where he is actually a good guy and protects humanity from extraterrestrial threats, this monsterverse Godzilla like the Tristar Godzilla is portrayed as an apex predator and a territorial species. But unlike the Tristar Godzilla who only wants fish, the monsterverse Titanus Gojira has a high level of intelligence and also actually knows who the good guys are and which ones are just collateral damage. It was evident when he appeared in Castle Bravo, the underwater fortress, almost seemingly signaling to the humans that their species have been tampering with a grievous threat and that they should follow him in order to help him in this battle. It was also likely that he viewed humans as a potential ally and our pets, like Serizawa stated in the 2019 movie. And if you remember in the 2014 scene when Godzilla was about to hit the United States Navy frigate but dived to avoid hitting it. And also the scenes where he just ignored the missile and tank fire on him, not treating us humans like a threat. Anyway, let's put all these into points and discuss why Godzilla sees us as allies and potential friends rather than a species that he should annihilate. So here we go. Number 1. Godzilla doesn't really see humans as a threat to his survival but as a source of radiation. We humans have been drilling and mining on a large scale since the 19th century and since the mid 20th century for radioactive uranium resources. So therefore, in the eyes of the G-Man, we could be reversing the environment to his liking. Uh, this might seem strange to many of you, but remember that Godzilla's species evolved during a time when the Earth's atmosphere and the entire planet as a whole was more radioactive during the Permian-Triassic Age. So it is in his best interest that we should be doing what we are doing and never stop doing it. Number 2. Humans are an integral part of the balance of life and therefore under his protection. It was stated in the movie that Godzilla was a territorial apex predator that eliminates threats that upset the balance of the world and the balance of life. And even if we try to deny and feel that we are above all that and the natural system, which we are not, we still are a part of the ecology of this world and maybe, just maybe, us releasing all the CO2 into the atmosphere might just be another part of the carbon cycle, like recirculating the trapped carbon. So since we are part of this world, we wouldn't be harmed by the G-Man. Number 3. Since humans have worshipped Godzilla and Mothra for ages, they seem like another species that share a symbiotic relationship. In King of the Monsters movie, we saw that Mothra and Godzilla each had a temple of their own even though the people that built them do not exist anymore. It can be seen that the titans were revered and there was a peaceful and harmonious existence between these three species which is Godzilla, Mothra and ancient humanity, which could have developed into a three-way symbiotic relationship with each species looking out for each other. Number 4. Humans might have helped to battle ancient titans and threats to Godzilla. It has been seen that Ghidorah in the past have killed a lot of people which can be seen in the cave paintings in the post credit scenes of Kong Skull Island and also when Dr. Chen shown Monarch her research on the origins of Godzilla in King of the Monsters movie. The theory is that since humanity has worshipped and lived alongside Mothra and Godzilla, they might have also assisted the two titans in the battle against the Monster Zero in the past. Another theory that I'm just throwing out there is that humans might have helped taken out the spores of Muto Prime from Godzilla in the past if a battle between them ever turned sour for the G-Man. And number 5. Ever since 1954, humans have been assisting Godzilla in his fights against the other titans. Even though modern humanity doesn't see Godzilla in the same light as the ancient ones, he might not have changed his view nonetheless. Humans have been helping the G-Man in killing his foes, although sometimes unknowingly. You want me to list them out? Alrighty then. 
In Godzilla Awakening in 1954, with the detonation of the hydrogen bomb in the Pacific Islands of Bikini Atoll, which was actually aimed at eliminating both the monsters, which is Godzilla and Shinomura. The explosion succeeded in killing one of the Shinomura swarms and also helping Godzilla since the blast would have made him more powerful, killing the Shinomura swarm more easily. If you want another example, then look no further than a 2014 movie when humans also aided Godzilla in battling and killing both the male and female Mutos in the San Francisco area. If the nest wasn't destroyed, the two Mutos wouldn't have been distracted and would have continued their beat down on the king. In Godzilla Aftershock, during her battle with Godzilla, Muto Prime releases a sonic roar so powerful that it shatters some of his dorsal blades. She does got the upper hand and almost injected her spores until Emma Russell and Tarkin rush into the bunker and activated a device that blares the sonic pulses which effectively distracts Prime, therefore allowing Godzilla to retaliate and with an atomic pulse, killing it. In King of the Monsters, humans revived Godzilla and fought alongside him against Ghidorah. So yeah, he was down for the count due to the oxygen destroyer weapon in the first place. But nevertheless, they revived him and made him more powerful than ever to a point that he went thermonuclear due to the overload of radiation and the essence of Mothra thereby restating point number three that it takes Godzilla, Mothra and humans as three symbiotes to defeat any threat. And so with this we come to the end of the video and we hope you enjoyed it. So do like, share and subscribe for more related content and do smash that notification bell for regular notifications as well.